All right, I'm back in Copenhagen and I'm about to go out for a ride. Um, probably on the busiest day of the year, busiest shopping day, um, because it's the Saturday before Christmas. So this is the house where I grew up. It's right in the downtown area of Copenhagen. And um, I have to set out to pick up some uh, parcel. Last chance to pick it up. <sighs> so you can see the Christmas lights. And I was just told that this street on the right here has become a shopping like a pedestrian street. Wow, this is the first time I see this street with the uh, promenade uh, tiling. So that's great. And actually the next street over as well has supposedly been turned into a shopping street also as of yesterday on the right here. And that also seems to be the case, yes. Okay, that's excellent. <clears throat> so, uh, it's about almost noon and people will be shopping big time. It's the 21st of December and now we are, I have to cross one of the shopping streets so I probably have to get off and walk like this guy in front. This is the Round Tower, one of the famous tourist sites. So this is actually my way to school for many years because I'm going to a place just behind the school where I had the first nine years of my schooling. These are the electric scooters strewn around on the floor. They have, like this one, they have been produced in Copenhagen this year. And apparently they are being uh, mistreated somewhat. So you rent it to a ride, but then you can park it anywhere. And I guess also with people being drunk and such, they end up being parked in a disorderly fashion. <coughs> I just arrived to Copenhagen this morning from Asia, so I'm quite jet lagged and not completely alert. <laughs> Well, there's a nice climate, it's about 5-6 degrees, no need to wear a jacket for me. This is actually my kind of climate, I usually don't wear a jacket in the winter. So. <coughs> sure. What I'm doing living in the tropics where the temperature is on average 27, 28 degrees and very high humidity. <coughs> this is much for me. So I'm filming this on a uh, 
GoPro Hero 8. So the newest GoPro. And this is my first real recording. I did a test recording previously. Um, but that one, the, there was a lot of wind noise. And I realized I hadn't activated the wind reduction feature. left is the botanical garden um, and on the right is the castle the small castle where we keep the crown jewels so so that's uh, definitely a tourist attraction kind of gunpowder in the air. There must be some fireworks. We love fireworks in Denmark. So people probably did a premature start of the fireworks which culminate at New Year's. Course. So this is the common trick we're using the pedestrian crossing as a way to get faster across sections <sighs> straight ahead is the uh, State Museum of Art and there used to be like a hedge around so it was quite close to the public so opening it up like this is actually much nicer I think that's a good idea One of the functions I forgot to activate is the GPS. So I should do that next time then. This camera should be able to show my speed as well. And of course map out my route. <coughs> but I'm most curious to see how good the sound is. Because once I got more than 20 kilometers an hour, then it really was uh, very noisy. Here's some Christmas tree shopping. And my school is the building here on the left, the dark brick building. It's called Krebs School. So I went to school there for nine years. Quite a small school. Quite a enjoyable time went to school for nine years with the same group of people we were about 20 24 people or so and then later in life i realized one of my friends that i only met much later while in malaysia she grew up right here in this street so it's a small world we probably have seen each other several times in earlier early on uh, let's 
see, I think. Have to go this way. Driving school guy in front. Let's see. My address is number 32. So it's here, park shop. Yeah, okay, that was easy. Guess I can just park out in front. I guess I'll just switch off. Okay. Cruise on the new line. Whoops. I'll just show you this famous area of Copenhagen, these row houses, very charming, um, where they have a, quite a nice community because traffic is very slow. Uh, they have these kind of benches for parties, the kids can play together. You see, it's all very intimate. And there's uh, maybe 10 uh, sort of parallel streets like this. Uh, so this is called the potato rose because it looks like someone has planted uh, a garden with potatoes and those you plant in straight lines um, and then I'll just see if I can pass it over here and go down to the lake so these are the I believe there used to be freshwater lakes for Copenhagen and also part of the defense. I'm not sure how good the brake is on this bike, so I'll just walk down the slope. Whoops. And uh, this is a favorite place for people to exercise, to run. I used to do that myself. So running from home and then around these lakes there were there sort of four or five in a in a row, so in a, in a semicircle around Copenhagen. That would be an eight kilometer run if I remember correctly. Uh, so it's just funny how because I grew up here so distances seem so Big. Now that I return, everything seems so small. Everything is very nearby. <laughs> so, I guess that's how it is. I just joined back the, the road. <laughs> <coughs> so, having a house here along these. Uh, these lakes is a good address because you have it's nice and open and you have a view over the water. <sighs> oh, this is my from university when I studied this is my way back. But I used to, my university is 15 kilometers north of Copenhagen. So it was a half hour ride at full speed. Good, good workout, half hour each way. So at the same time it takes to uh, the public transport. So. so even though it's a good distance, Cycling was just as fast. But then I would of course require a shower. So the building here on the right is a geological museum. And I just noticed passing the other way just now that there's an uh, exhibition for meteorites and 
they have a famous Vita Or in the front uh, yard. So I'll just go and have a look at that. See here it says the meteorites. A journey through time and space. And this is the famous one that was found in Greenland. Um, and my grandfather was actually involved in uh, this expedition, more on the funding side. Uh, and at the time, this was the biggest iron meter ore in the world. So you can see his iron here. And I think it was cut in half or something. Yeah, you can see here. It's cut in half. So. Yeah. So it fell in Greenland 12,000 years ago. And was discovered in 1963 and was hauled to Denmark. And it weighed 20 tons. <coughs> so. So this whole story of uh, finding this meteor was covered in the Danish press and at that time there was a young boy uh, who later became one of our famous authors uh, and he was quite fascinated by this story and eventually wrote the book uh, which became a movie international movie they filmed in English uh, which is called Smilla's Sense of Snow so for his research of that he actually went back to the researcher Vaughn Buchwald who uh, who led that expedition to find the meteor um, to uh, hear some more details about it and my grandfather uh, was one of the people supporting this mission and he was given a, a piece of the meter ore that was cut out for him and when he passed away uh, I inherited that piece so I have this piece of meter ore And it's interesting to think that this piece is older than Earth. Uh, because this meteor was actually traveling through space before Earth was formed. So I was doing some teaching once and I brought the, the piece, this piece of metal to, to the class and I asked the students, the master students in the university, so what? How old do you think this piece of metal is? And they thought it was a piece of scrap metal. So they were guessing hmm, maybe five years old or, or whatever they said. It was nothing more than 10 years old. So they were shocked to learn that this was actually older than Earth. The age of Earth. Pedestrians have a green light. I think I might as well go. I'm not sure why the light is so slow. I think it's basically to allow the pedestrians to walk before all the cars start turning right. So the Copenhagen traffic signals is good in that way. They actually give priority to pedestrians and to cyclists. A lot of accidents, you know, happen at junctions 
where in both cyclists and the rest of the traffic start get a green light at the same time then and if there's a truck that doesn't see the cyclist on the side and they turn then the cyclists get uh, pinched under the truck and get crushed to death so giving the cyclist a bit of a head start is a good way to make them visible to the whatever traffic needs to make a right turn <sighs> these grills here is basically for climate change mitigation because we get much more intense rains and therefore instead of having the occasional drain now we have a drain throughout the length of the street and some water storage under the pavement so the city becomes much more sponge so in case of heavy rain we are less likely to get flooding and some years ago we had a so-called 500 year rain in Copenhagen so that means it only happens once every 500 years and in this case it was basically the first time it was ever recorded um, and we had some other intense rainfalls so it's so the climate is definitely changing and we have to adapt and of course also address the root cause climate change so uh, earlier this month or was it last month Denmark uh, agrees on a climate law which is seen to be very progressive uh, globally in the global context I haven't uh, looked into it yet so I will be doing that over this Christmas break <clears throat> but certainly cycling is uh, one way to minimize the carbon emissions and speaking of which I have to go home and offset my CO2 emissions from my flight because that's one of the very bad things so that emits a lot of CO2 um, so the best alternative at the moment is to offset the carbon so you basically uh, buy carbon credits uh, and that's verified by the gold standard so a third party that testifies that these savings are real and then the equivalent amount of carbon is removed from the atmosphere that your flight has emitted <coughs> and that can be uh, various energy efficiency projects or rural development projects solar cooking stove solar energy and also some tree planting and we're back and this is actually the bike I was close to buying that's my cargo bike, quite cool with the seat, also a Danish design. <clears throat> but it was a little bit too low, I thought. Alright, over and out.